My name is Stephanie Glinsky and I'm a journalist. I worked in Sestan for the last year and a half. I reported on the civil war and the humanitarian crisis in the country. I think what's fascinating about neglected conflicts is that you get a unique insight into people's lives. You get to spend a lot of time with children, women, men who have experienced conflict on a, on a first-hand basis and you go in and people tell you their stories of how they've lost family members, how they've been through decades of war. And as a journalist, for me, it's it's important to, to step into these contexts and kind of give these people a voice and make sure their stories get heard because they might not be able to tell their stories again and I think it's important to get out. I knew that going into South Sudan as a journalist would be quite a challenging context. At the same time, I also knew that the stories would be interesting and very important to tell. It's one of these conflicts that's been going on for quite a long time. It's not covered in the media extensively, but I think it deserves a voice. I think it deserves space in the media. Life in South Sudan is interesting, fascinating, scary sometimes as well. Um, you have guns, guns are all present. You see the military on the streets all the time. You see police, there are police checkpoints going up in the evenings with heavy guns. The conflict is kind of all present all the time in the capital Juba. When you go out of the country, it's, it's usually quite a rural area. You do see some of the conflict as well. Definitely you see what's happened to the people who often live in displaced people camps uh, or who've lost family members, lost their homes. Life in Juba for me, I lived in a compound with high walls and razor wire. We had guards. They, they had guns. They never showed them to us, but we knew they had them to protect the compound. Um, it was quite a, a small community that we were living in, about 10 people, eight workers, journalists, UN staff members. So a diverse group of people, and some of these people really became my support system in South Sudan as well, especially when I traveled to the field for a week where you often sleep in a tent or a compound, very remote. Um, and coming back and having that support system, yeah, that was definitely great. Juba in itself is, it's still quite a small city, although it's, it's expanding, but if you take into account that the civil war has brought an economic crisis and inflation, there's just not a lot of businesses, most of the foods being imported from Uganda, other neighboring countries. The, the civil war is so, so much part of daily life with everything that you see with the soldiers. Um, you have to interact with all of these people and it becomes normal, it almost becomes normal to, to live in, in a conflict zone, to hear shooting every once in a while. And I came back to Europe and <laughs> I think it's when I noticed that it's not incredibly normal. We always say that South Sudan is okay until it's not, and I think that's one of the reasons why it actually is so dangerous. If you look at what happened since the start of the civil war, we had about 108 workers killed. Last year an international journalist died, and he was also killed. So, so life on a daily basis is, is and can be quite dangerous. Um, there's a UN imposed curfew at 7 p.m. and it's got its reasons. I, I don't have to bite by it as a journalist, um, but it doesn't make sense for me to, to be out at night. I think one of the most dangerous situations for me was in Juba. It was after the U.S. had imposed sanctions on South Sudan and people were going out in the street to demonstrate and a lot of the people who were demonstrating were soldiers wearing civilian clothes. So I walked up to, to the demonstration with my camera. I was just getting my camera out, trying to shoot. And people got really angry and started to throw big rocks at me and um, stones, um, pretty much everything that they had, and were yelling at me saying, put your, put your camera away. And I, I, I did very, very slowly and tried to walk away slowly, but quite an angry mob of people came running towards me and tried to tackle me and chase me down. Um, they ended up chasing me back to my compound. My guards were outside, they saw me, they, they helped me get inside, but people still tried to break into my compound. And I think that was one of these moments where everything had been okay five minutes ago, and then it really turned into quite a dangerous situation. Um, so it really brings it home when, when you experience things like that. 
there are a lot of remarkable things to report on in South Sudan. Of course, there's hunger and displacement and fighting, death. So there's a lot of very heavy topic topics that kind of burden you a little bit and you feel like you do need to get those stories out. I think the stories that, that stick with me the most are some of the positive stories, actually. And one of the, um, probably one of my favorite days in South Sudan was when I was going out to one of the IDP camps um, in the north of the country and we were picking up uh, a lady, a mother, and she had been displaced for the past eight years and she hadn't seen her daughter um, in all of that time. She didn't know where her daughter was. But they had found her daughter and I, I spoke to the lady and asked her, what did you do for the last eight years? And she said, I was in my house by myself for the last eight years. And I asked her if she had anybody and she said no. And she she went through the civil war the last years, the last five years, completely by herself. So we took this lady and put her on the plane to fly to another place, Bentiu in South Sudan, where her daughter was. And it was quite emotional. She uh, She started already tearing up on the plane. She couldn't believe it that she was about to see her daughter. Her daughter had already had children, um, four children, and this is the first time that she would meet this whole family that she'd been missing out on. She got off the plane, her daughter was standing there, and both of them were screaming and crying. And I think it, it was quite an amazing event to see how war had devastated the, their lives, but at the same time, it was just something good and I, I was tearing up as well. It was, <laughs> it was quite emotional, but yeah, great to see that there's still a couple of positive things coming out or things happening in the country. If people were to take one thing away from my reporting, I hope it would be the fact that South Sudan's war is quite complicated. There's a lot of different factors playing into it. There's different rebel groups, different ethnic groups, um, there's tensions on so many levels. Um, it's a complicated political situation. We also have the humanitarian crisis. There was a famine. So there's a, just a lot of things that play into the conflict. And I think it's important to, to know that it's not easy to break down, that no conflict is easy to break down, actually. And I've had a couple of people approach me after publishing stories every once in a while and they would say thank you so much for breaking this down for us um, it makes a lot of sense now because even people in South Sudan it's it's hard to to keep track of what is happening of what different rebel groups are doing what the political situation is because it could change any day and all the time it's tough to see or to know quite yet what's gonna happen with the new peace agreement that was signed We've seen a peace agreement being signed previously, and that completely failed in 2016 with heavy fighting breaking out in Juba. Lots of people died. So the peace agreement we have now is a bit of a similar deal. So we'll have to see what it holds. People in Juba were quite excited. They were on the street. They were welcoming President Salva Kiir back. And people were excited. They're hoping for, they're hoping for peace. They're hoping for a better economy. They're hoping for inflation to decrease. So. It's great to have the agreement on one side and on the other side with one signature. Of course, you can't change all the problems that South Sudan has been having over the last years. But we'll have to see and, and wait what's going to happen.